Hey, what's up? So, Ditch the Grind. Uh, welcome back. If you've been here before, if not, welcome to the channel. My name is Brad Schomkel, Ditch the Grind. Um, this way, I'm going to be doing my best to tell you how you can not be scammed by an MLM. Um, so, if this is your first time to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe. Uh, I am part of a new channel. We're only just sort of started to get things going. So, I hope that uh, if this is the first video that you've seen, um, then you'll get some value out of it, in which case I hope that you'll give me a like or also subscribe to the channel and um, I hope that you can get some value out of it above and, uh, above all. So um, when it comes to MLM, MLM is a bit of a touchy subject for a lot of people, uh, myself included, and there was a period of time where I would do my best to avoid them because I went through a bit of a period where I got involved with them, I got sold on the hype and all the bullshit that comes with it, and I ultimately got scammed out of a lot of money and um, it's it's pretty shit uh, and if it's ever happened to you I'm sure you know how that feels and I would like for not only yourself or myself or anyone else that's new to the channel to not get done by that in the future because it is pretty shit so uh, a few things to look out for um, number one is a shit product or service and it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, but the main reason behind that is because for me personally, as I mentioned before, I've been burnt by MLMs in the past. So what I do now is I don't go looking specifically for anything that has an MLM attached to it or anything that has an MLM service or product. The, what I want to do is I want to find a platform or a product or service that can stand by itself and you can sign or you can become a part of that product or service and you can sell it and the product or service can stand on its own two feet it is completely independent of a bunch of people having to sign up under you because that is what perpetuates a ponzi scheme um and so what i mean by that is if you can go in and you can be happy that you were gonna make money based on the product or the service itself then the chances are that the product or platform itself is going to survive and you don't have to keep feeling like you've got to pressure people to join your team just so that you can make money. That's, that's bullshit. You shouldn't have to do that, okay? So, um, yeah, shit product or service. Um, so uh, that's number one. So number two, sensational claims. That's another thing to look out for, and that's not that's – not, restricted to just MLM products. That is with anything that you find online. If you're here trying to find a way to make a living, not just online, but outside of your regular nine to five job, for example, if you ever go searching for alternative ways to make a living online, you're going to come across a whole lot of sensational shit, basically, where people are trying to sell you these just, just basically hopes and dreams and empty promises. Um, so if you if you feel like uh, an, this like an MLM that you're considering joining is having like is pushing these sensational claims on you, that's for me personally that's a lot of red flags. And then I start to dig a lot deeper when it comes to that. I try to find out everything about the company, who's in charge of it, the the members if possible, the kind of products or services that they have, how long it's been operating for, any complaints, who they're registered with, all that kind of thing, any anything that you can find about it. But then at the same time too, if you go searching for something negative about anything, you're going to find it. If you're going to go searching for something positive about something, chances are you're going to find it, unless it's unless it's really really bad. But even in that case, you're always going to find something to support whatever it is that you are specifically searching for. Ultimately, it's going to come down to you. Um, so number three. If you are encouraged to use pushy sales tactics to push your MLM or to try and recruit members into your network, for one, I've, I've been approached by pushy salesmen in the past. And when I was when I was a lot younger, I used to be a little bit intimidated by it. Nowadays, I kind of welcome it because I like to tell people where to go. Um, and at the same time too, like if, if, if they... If the product or service itself stands on its own two feet, you shouldn't need to be pushy to sell it or to recruit. 
the product or service should be able to do it itself and you shouldn't need to do that. So if it comes down to the, like, it comes down to you speaking to someone that you're thinking might be interested, possibly be interested in what it is that you are involved with. If you feel like you have to be crafty or you feel like you have to manipulate in any way, shape or form, then you have to question the integrity of the program that you've joined. If it's just, I'm doing really well with this and I think you should take a look at it. No strings attached, no questions asked. Just just go and have a look, see what you think. I'm here to help. No stress if you want to get involved. Awesome. If you don't, that's cool. Still be friends. But if you feel like it's going to push, if you feel like it's going to put um, unnecessary stress on a relationship that you have, you should probably seriously consider what it is that you're doing. Okay. Uh, so th this one's a big one for me. Number four is auto ship. If a product has to have an auto ship, you have to sign up or subscribe to something that you have an, a regular recurring monthly fee to be a part of that program. Then again, I seriously start to question its integrity because again, like if your product does what it says that it's going to do, then it should speak for itself. You shouldn't have to coax people in to paying a regular fee for it. If it's an MLM, if it's, if it's like, so the other side of the coin too, there is like, if it's a, a subscription service to Netflix, for example, that's a little bit different, but that's in most cases, to my experience, this is not what that is. This is buying a bunch of fucking makeup and shit that like, you, you, you have to use in that monthly period. And then you've got to buy more of the shit, you know? So like, I, to, I've never really used makeup before, you know, so um, that might be a poor example. But if you have to keep committing to it and you have to keep buying it, then for me, that's a red flag. And again, I'm going to start looking deeper into it. Um, crap communication. So if you do get involved in one of these in one of these things, it's still early days and you find yourself that you've committed to an auto ship, you are being forced and you have yourself been subjected to pushy sales tactics and that kind of thing. If you find yourself in a position like that, and then you suddenly are finding that you have a crap line of communication, you're trying to get in touch with your upline, those people that are responsible for having had you join their team, then that's another red flag for me. And I'd be looking like looking to try and get out of that quickly because if you don't get your questions asked, answered, and you can't find support for your concerns, then you have to start to question it as well. The way that in an upline should work as well as a network should work is that everybody that is involved in your team and everybody in your upline, they should be there to help you. And there should be, it's, it's what we call like the chain of command. I'm sure you're familiar with that sort of phrase as well. It is the same in this as it is in just about any aspect of life in the hierarchy. So if you have crap communication and you can't get your questions answered and you have genuine concerns, then you might want to start thinking about what it is that you're doing and what it is that they're doing as well. Um, pressure to upgrade to like further training, further paid training or other items that you could find in, in the, in, in, like under the MLM, under the company. If there's pressure to upgrade to try and keep a genuine, like uh, trying to keep more regular income for them coming into, that's another red flag for me. Um, I, by, like, I, I probably wouldn't allow myself to get to this point though. And that's purely because I have been involved in these ones in the past where it's, it's just, it's not a nice feeling. Um, but yeah. And then the other one, the last one, number seven, good old gut feeling. If you have any doubts at all about it, and that might be a bit harsh, but if you, if you find that you just genuinely in your gut, you don't feel that this is the right decision for you somebody or someone or something is trying to tell you, you should not get involved or you should wait. But then, you know, like you always, you always, you want to be, you want to be careful about what it is that you do with your money. But at the same time too, you get very little reward for very little risk. So it, it becomes, a, there comes a point in time where you have to make an educated um, decision on what it is that you're going to do with your money whether or not it is actually going to be an investment. If you can put some money into it that you are prepared to part with, you can see how it goes and you can just kind of test it from there. 
if you go a little bit further, you test it, you think, okay, this is awesome. I'll put a little bit more in, but you want to get yourself to a point where if you invest that money, you want to be able to get to a point where you are starting to generate more revenue. And as that increases, then you get to the point where you are comfortable withdrawing what it is that you deposited to get yourself started. And then you're back to square one. You haven't actually lost any money. And then everything you play with from that point onwards is, is yours without having to risk any more capital. Um, so yeah, basically those are the things that I would look for if I was going to get involved in an MLM. Um, if you're like, if you feel that you got some value out of this video, please give me a like, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And even though I said that I'm always wary of MLMs, I would like the opportunity, opportunity to share with you a product and service that I have been involved with recently. And that's something that I got involved with purely because of the product that it is and the service that it provides. And it just so happens that it has an MLM aspect to it. But the good news is you don't have to be reliant completely on the MLM side of it. You can get involved and you can actually earn passively by purchasing a package and you get a return on your investment and you don't have to get involved. You don't have to go and pressure fam friends and family and go and put relationships on the line so that you can just make a buck. You don't have to go and create a massive network of people. You don't have to do that. You can if you want to. And that's the beauty of this one. And I hope that you want to check that out. So keep an eye out for the video. If you subscribe and you get check the notification bell, when that video drops, then you'll be one of the first to know. And then you can come and check it out. And I hope to see you there. I'm Brad, just the grind. I hope to see you soon.